you guys make sure y'all thumbs up this video and make sure you subscribe. Also, make sure you guys give super stickers. You can give super stickers in this um, live. What you do is you scroll over and the super stick to all the people who give in the lives. Y'all can give in these videos too. And I'm and it's well appreciated. Thank you so much. Hello, yes, this is your girl Jenna. And today we are going to talk about, huh? Miss Brittany and Miss Vivica, all right? But you know what to do? Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Cut those notifications on. Leave us a comment. Thank you for all the donations, you guys. Thank you so much for all the comments and everything you guys are making. An uh, awesome uh, community here. Uh, thank you for all the kind words that you're giving me as well. And the feedback. I do appreciate that. Okay? I really do. All right. Um, so, yeah. Let's get into the video. So, yeah. It seems like it's an issue. Um in the e skincare streets between Miss Brittany and Miss Vivica, okay? So you know that like James is, um, you know, his skin care or whatever, his cream, butter cream, uh, went bad through the mail and was rancid and got to the, you know, the customer and it was all molded and everything. Y'all, y'all remember that? It just happened, right? Well, apparently with Miss Vivica, she's also getting some complaints or fake reviews or whatever and in her comments i went in there and they said we know who that possibly could be so it just seems like it's a little riffraff going on between these two um young ladies all right let me tell you what i feel about that first and foremost if miss Brittany is taunting um her ex-husband's new friend then obviously those feelings, there are some feelings there of whether it be resentment, jealousy, rage, whatever, might be all of those. Obviously, she is not able to move on, okay? And maybe they're nitpicking at each other, okay? Because I do remember Miss Brittany calling Miss Vivica grandma and, and to that, you know, and I also remember just recently Miss Vivica was talking about flattery or something imitation is the best form of flattery and it would kind of you know making fun of the fact that you know james's cream went bad miss vivica you are not just who you are just to be who you are in age but also in wisdom you are supposed to be aged please don't go back and forth with these kids they are kids to you um miss uh britney is young enough to be your daughter yeah uh-huh. It's a good two decades between you guys as far as age and maybe even more as far as maturity. Do not go back and forth with these people. Take it from me. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to. Now, am I saying be fearful or anything? Of course not. But don't play in their arena. You know, if you are saying that you are, you know, a Christian woman and you're mature and you know, obviously your your whole line is better. Miss Lupac was talking about it on her video saying it looks good enough to, you know, um, to have a meal. It looks like you can, ha you know, basically enjoy it as a, as, as a, a pudding or something. You know, that's, that's how good it looks. And I actually looked at it and that the presentation looks great. And I can almost smell it through the phone. It just has a good, uh, a better vibe to it. It looks clean. It looks pristine. You don't have to go down to their level. I know you feel like you may have to, but you don't. So once you go down to their level, then you're going down to those devils, and then you're going to remove the covering off of you. Don't do that. That's just, just take it from me. So she put on her her uh, post, uh, Miss Vivica, I'm done with it. Y'all can retreat to your nest now. Yeah, right. They're not going to retreat. They're going to keep going. Once they see that they have made entry, they're not going to be like, okay, we made entry. We've reached the fortress. Let's go ahead and leave now. No, they're not going to do that. It's the holidays and I'm off this low vibrational energy that y you all are bringing. Forever tis the season. No, baby. It doesn't go that way. Devils don't sleep. They don't take off for the holidays. They don't take off for sickness. They don't take off for nothing. They constantly go at it. You posting this does nothing but tells them that, yup, they bothered you. And they're going to want to go after you more and more and more. 
okay? We need to stop leaning to our own understanding. Acknowledge God and he shall direct our path. Every little thing does not need to be talked about. It really doesn't. Take your age, take your experience, take the fact, take the higher road, as they would say, and just peace be still. When you want to peace be still, don't even announce it. No announcement is also an announcement. Silence is also a way of, of, of communication. It's a whole situation where they call, when you give somebody a silent treatment, it's called passive aggressiveness. Passive aggressiveness. It is definitely a way of communicating. So when people say, when you're not saying nothing, that means you don't, but mm -mm, silence is golden. That's what the old school say. And you're old enough to even have heard that. You're older than me. You get what I'm saying? And so I was raised by my grandparents. So I have, um, I've, I've been um, graced to have that type of knowledge. You get what I'm saying? But girlfriend, please don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't go down to their level because they can go all day. And the mischief run, they can go all day. I get tired when I have mischief in my life. I get tired when I join in with, with issues and grief and, tra and traumas and stuff. I don't get energy off of that. It drains me. And I know you drain, sis. Because this has been happening, what, less than 24 hours? And you already said, oh, I'm done. Yeah, you uh -uh, don't even do it. Don't even do it. Okay, so let's get to the next post, you guys. We got a lot. So we're going to go to some posts that Miss Brittany placed on her um, page when she was able to post again, guys, because she basically posted like four or five things in one hour. Remember I said she was going uh, live a few days ago and she started going back and forth with somebody and boom, it automatically like say and shut off. I kind of knew that she probably was demerited for a few hours. All right. So then when she was able to do it, she said, sometimes the enemy will play on the people around you. Okay, uh, we'll play on the people around you to use them to get what he's trying to take from you. Okay, spiritual warfare is just spiritual warfare. We are literally nothing, Brittany, without the spirit that's within us. So this really should l basically read, sometimes the enemy will play on the people around you. That's it. Because we have to choose every day who we serve. And I'm going to go to the verse real quick. All right. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> okay. So I went and I found the verse because I'm tired of myself um, referencing the Bible. In this, day, in this day and age, we need to know the recipe. We need to get right to the word so we can ingest it ourselves. Amen. All right. So the Bible verse that I was referring to is Joshua 24, 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This verse emphasizes the importance of making a conscious decision each day about whom we will serve and follow. So literally, every day, every situation, every second, when we choose to do right, and when I say right, God's right, what God says is right, because what man says is right is not always right, unless he is referencing the Lord, we're never right. Okay, um, you have to choose who you're going to serve. So if you're doing, if you're doing God's right, you're serving God. If you're doing the devil's wrong, you are serving him. So that's the spirit in which we live every day. Who do you serve? Okay, Miss Brittany seems to talk about the devil all of the time. I have been doing these videos for a little bit now and I'm noticing a pattern. You're giving the enemy more, you're basically giving the enemy a platform like he needs a platform. He doesn't need a platform. We need to big up God and what he says. And so as for me on this channel and my family and all of the people who basically support this channel, we're going to serve God. 
And so, yes, the devil is going to do what he supposed to do, which is cause mischief and, and confusion in your life. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean I have to join in and do it. The more right you do, the more focused you are on God, the enemy gets angry. But in the same token, God is going to cover you so the enemy can't touch you the way he wants to touch you. It says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's going to be another uh, verse I'm going to look up. All right. So in Isaiah 54, verse 17, it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and you will refute every word that accuses you. Every person who accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication is for me, declares the Lord. All right. So basically, when we're doing God's work, the enemy is going to be angry. He is going to be jealous. He is going to send every little thing that he can to distract you. And if you have knowledge of those vices, then you will be prepared. And you'll be able to identify it, okay? If you got to this point of the, of, the, of the video, what are you going through right now that you feel could be a part of spiritual warfare, okay? Just, just, just let us know. I only need one person to say it. What is it? With me, it is going to be, I'm going to be real and be transparent. My finances. Mm-hmm. I know that. It is a spiritual issue because ever since I started delivering this message, mind you, I started off as a commentator, as a person who, you know, cuts jokes and has fun, but yet still, you know, give a lesson. That is a gift that God has given me, that it was planted in me as a young one, okay? Um, and it just little, it literally just bloomed with me doing this job. I was not always um, someone who was outgoing and all of that. And and, and I am shy. <laughs> yes, I'm very shy. I was made fun of as a child. I was the only child. I was a loner. I was a person who just went to school and went home. And I started blossoming a little bit. But, you know, and I probably was like that because of some things that had happened to me as a youngin. Let's just keep that 100. Um, but God has basically literally taken me out of that situation and healed me. And now he's given me an, um, an ability to talk to you guys and, 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 and be a, uh, a testimony of how God can literally um, just change your life without you even knowing it. But if you sit back and reflect like, oh, I could be here, but I'm thank God I'm here. Okay, so with that being said, God will use you. He will use you if you ask him to, even if you don't, he'll use you. But once you become a person who is, you know, aware of him using you, the, the enemy is going to be angry, you know. And then all of a sudden, after I was the funny lady, <laughs> you know, or I was bringing comedy to it, then God said, okay, you're going to take this and you're going to be spiritual with it. You are going to talk about the word. You're going to help people through um, their lives, through the story of the, the, the Latrus. And you're going to bring God's word into it. And you're going to help deliver people. And you're going to do this. And all the while, I'm like, okay, you know, how? You know, I have my own issues. I've been through some things. I got some emotional issues. I got some anger problems. And God was like, no, none of that matters because we're going to use that. He'll use what, what the devil says is your weakness. He'll use it for the betterment of, of, of what he wants for you in your life. And so once I started getting into really deep into my faith and, 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 and reading the word, and then all of a sudden, my finances started to deteriorate. There is no other word for me to say. <laughs> deteriorate. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, deteriorate. <laughs> but God is withstanding my family. Trust me. A lot of things are changing. When you are 100% online, online has changed so many times over the years. And one thing that he has placed over our family 
with his help, of course, is adaption. I've been able to adapt. And so today when I'm making this video, I don't necessarily feel like it. I don't necessarily get on here knowing exactly what I'm going to say. But God is putting the place and the words in my mouth to say. And so I hope that this is helping whomever is, is watching this. It doesn't matter if you're going through a financial struggle, if you're going through an emotional struggle, if you're going through, you know, a spirit of infirmity and things like that. That is all the enemy trying to take you off of the path of righteousness. And you have to get into it and say, you know what, God, I trust you. I trust that you are going to lead me down a path of where you want me to go and you will never fail me and you will never leave me and you will never let my hand go even though i don't know what's going to go on i don't know what's in the front of me but i know god you're already there and you got it under control and that is what keeps me doing this every day and so i'm sharing that with you guys i hope that helps you guys out to know that this has nothing to do with you know oh, i'm getting rich and no when you're doing righteousness, your richness is not necessarily in monetary. It's going to be in other things that's going to withstand you and keep you to keep going. Because money is funny. That's not just a saying. If you really think about it, it is funny. It's there one day and can be gone the other. But God is there every day. Okay? So let's big up God more. Stop bigging up this darn enemy. He has enough representation. Okay? Let's just keep that all the way real let's go to the next one sometimes the devil attacks the enemy y'all the enemy attacks a thing not to attack a thing but to attack your faith mm. don't know what she's talking about your faith is covered in god it only has to be the size of a mustard seed so it doesn't matter how much the enemy tries to do it. It literally only has to be the size of a mustard seed for God to do what he needs to do. Okay? And don't you ever say that the devil can. Yeah, he can. He can do all different things. But no. Nah, my faith it belongs to God. My home belongs to God. My marriage. My children. Everything belongs to God. And when you acknowledge that, the enemy can't do much. Because he wants you to think that it's all you. He thinks, he makes you think that you built this and you do this and you wake yourself up and you're able to do, you can't do nothing without God. And so that's why I, God said you only need the faith, the size of a mustard seed, which is tiny. But from that faith of a mustard seed, he can do great things. Okay, I'm just saying. So we know who Miss Brittany is serving. That enemy is brewing. That enemy is brewing. It is growing. It's confused and it's spreading the confusion. And we rebuke that. We rebuke that. Let's go to the next one. She said, you got to be careful how you treat people. Because you don't know if those people are here to... I'm sorry, here or not here. Hmm? You got to be careful how you treat people because you don't know if those people are here or not here. This is going to go over some of y'all heads. It went over my head. <laughs> what the heck does that mean? You got to be careful how you treat people because you don't know if people are here or not here. Okay, I get, I get what she's saying. I get what she's alluding to. You know how somebody say you're not all there? That's indirectly saying that you're not stable mentally. I think that's where she was trying to go with that. And that is true. But God says to love one another. It doesn't matter. Look, love, what they say? Love conquers a multitude of things. I don't know what verse that is. If someone can find that verse, please place it in the comments. All right. If you love one another. Okay, if you accept God's love, which is correction, okay, righteous judgment and things like that, just, just, just hand love. I did not always know that if you were mean to me, I was not necessarily mean back, but I would stop dealing with you. You have to, you have to love one another. 
that love is going to help basically activate the love in the other person, even if it doesn't do it immediately. You know, you get more bees with honey than vinegar. So let's not that let's not threaten people. Okay? Let's not do that. Let's just understand. So basically she's saying that she could possibly not all be there. And we kind of already know that because the thing about it, shoot, I wasn't all there. When I was in my anger issues and all of this and stuck in my emotions, when I had undissolved emotions from my childhood, that I said, you know what? I'm not going to, you know, basically require a psychiatrist or, a, or a, you know, my husband or a counselor to try to take that away. God's going to take that away. And that's what he did. What happened to me as a child happened to me as a child. I didn't do it. The person who, whatever, or the people who did it, did it. And they're going to have to deal with that. Why should I have to go around with all that? And it basically ruined my life. And then I'm causing that issue to go on others because I'm treating others the way I was treated when somebody came along with me and, and, and did whatever. You get what I'm saying? Who knows what happened to that person? You know, so instead of me hurrying around that, I said, God, take that away. I had to lay that down because it was aging me. It was blocking me from working, blocking me from, from growing, blocking me from different relationships. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, we all going to have a time where we may not be all there. In fact, I wasn't all there until I opened God's word. That's the true manual. They say, oh, life doesn't have a manual. It does. It's God's word. You just got to what? Open it and give it a chance. So I'm not above anybody. My mind is intact only because God allows it to be. A, 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 and I, when I say, in, I say intact, meaning together, because I'm, worshiping God and I know who, where all my good things come from it comes from him acknowledge him in everything you do and he will direct your path I swear sometimes I don't know how I'm gonna do this this and this but I get through it the bills get paid the food gets in the fridge the videos get made my sanity is still there because I'm not putting my energy into this earthly realm i'm putting it into god because it says your treasure is not on earth it's in heaven now he said he wants us to have riches and he wants us to have abundance and he wants us to be healthy he wants his people to be healthy he doesn't want us to be in debt the debt that's that's of the enemy you get what i'm saying if you living on credit if you living on debt and got bills up the wazoo that's the enemy that's spiritual warfare if we held in debt, that's 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 not good. You can't move. You can't do nothing because you're working and just to, just to pay off some debt that you possibly will be in for the rest of your life. How can you live abundantly like that? When you only think that the money, money being there is going to get you out of it. You could have a whole bunch of money and still be in debt finan or mentally, spiritually, financially, physically. You got to understand how this really works. So yes, show love. Show love even when love is not being shown to you. Because remember, the things that are happening to you is reflection of what you're doing. Now some of these financial issues and things like that is because you're going through some type of insanity where you're doing the same thing over and over again and you're expecting different results. That is you are in a mind, you're stuck. That's why I said this, this, you know, with this um Britney thing, I said, God, I have to get out of this. I have to, I have to spin this a different way. I don't want to be in this just talking about this, just to talk about it to get a goddamn YT check. No, that's not what this is about. We 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 here to just to save souls here. We here to, to, to give people the light, the direction. I don't want to just talk about this woman for what? I got my own issues. But one thing about this storyline is it is getting me through my own issues because I'm sitting here having to get the word within me to come on this channel to even give the word to you guys. That's how it works. Ain't no way I want to sit here and just talk about something miserable every day. For what? For me to talk about something miserable every day, I'm going to have to turn it and, and make it a lesson and, and make it where people learn from it. I'm not going to just sit here and just cackle and gossip and all that. I'm not going to do that. 
So when those people say, oh, you gossip and all that, I said, you know what? That's not of God. And I, if, if I'm giving that type of aura, we want to change this up, God. And let people know what's really up here. Now, Miss Vivica is a little angry on this one. She said, I said what I said. Don't send your flying animals to leave fake reviews on my product. Mm. I've been hearing that a lot. Do y'all know what the, the flying, whatever, that comes from Wizard of Oz, but I don't know what that is. Basically, your minions, right? I'm not sending out rancid products nor claiming fake you-know-what mistreatment, y'all. She put all that up there. Uh -huh. Use that energy to focus on the real issue. We good over here. You do the same, Miss Vivica. I Honestly, I have a feeling of a spirit of witchcraft going on. Mm -hmm. Which when I realize that, it's kind of daunting. But God has all of that under control. There are so there are so many witches out here. They come in all shapes and sizes. And you have to ask God to give you discernment to know who are the witches. Social media is not just um, something to do anymore. It's not an enjoyment. It's not a a separation from your life. It is literally an extension of it. So what you put out there, what you talk about, it better be right. If it's not, it's going to come back to you. Okay? We are not to rejoice in anyone's misfortune because it will happen to you. We are to immediately, as God's people, go into prayer privately. Because what we do privately, God will do in public. People will know what you do for people by how you act. That is in the Bible. By your fruits. You judge a man by his fruits. I shouldn't have to tell you who I am, who I serve. You should automatically know who I am and who I serve if you are doing the same thing. You should know... If someone is not serving God by what they do and what they say out of their mouth, by how they react. And so what I am seeing is I'm seeing witchcraft here. And so I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Okay? That's why God has set me apart from anyone else in this. And honey, I have been attacked. I have been, but guess what? The weapons that were formed has, have not prospered. God has always fought my battles. Has it been easy for me to realize that there's nothing I can do sometimes? Nope, not always, but it's getting there because there's nothing I can do. Because I'm not in control. God is. He's in control of everything. Even the words that come out of my mouth, he is in control. Why? Because I asked God to, to, to put the words in my mouth. And you do the same. Okay? You can't join in with, 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 with misery and not be miserable yourself. So with that being said, I see a lot of misery on both ends. They both need to get delivered. Where God isn't, success will not be either. Your success comes from God. I don't care if you are Betty Crocker making God darn uh, freaking pancakes look like God darn, uh, um those sponges that you put on your face and put the cream on there too. I don't give a darn who you are. If you don't give God his due, it ain't going to work. Cover your business. Cover your wellness. Cover yourself and your children and your family and God. And you always pray for them, even when they do you wrong. When God, when Jesus was up on that cross... He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. He could have willed them to boom, boom, boom. He could have said, God, da, 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 da. he didn't do that. He prayed. So we are to do the same. You want to pray for your enemy. You want your enemy to get delivered. The devil is the author of confusion. Who is she talking about? Yes, he is. 
But when she goes through these little, um, you know, these little uh, tirades or, you know, this posting all this random stuff, she's usually talking about somebody. I don't get the feeling she's talking about James, though, but I could be wrong. The devil, the enemy will play on your heart if he knows you're a giver. He will use someone you trust to hurt and betray you. So you'll build a wall and not trust anyone ever again. See how slick the enemy is? Mm. Yes, he is. Very slick. But what are you a giver of? People think a giver means, oh, I give money. I give items. What else do you give them? Do you give misery? Do you give confusion? Because if you are a giver of that, then you don't deserve God's graces, even though he still gives us grace, because that's how good God is. You don't deserve certain things that you feel like you deserve because you're giving other things. And so you, you, you have to choose who you serve, Brittany and whomever else and myself too. You have to every day. Because the enemy never sleeps. So if you're getting to the point where you're not able to sleep and you're not able to rest, and by sleep, I don't mean just sleep and, you know, sleep at eight hours at night, but just be able just to rest and be okay with yourself, that means that something is going on spiritually and you're being agitated and you're going through some spiritual war there. Let's talk about half-mindedness real quick, okay? Okay, so it's actually called double-minded, but that had popped up in my mind. Look at God. Thank you, Jesus. For giving me this clarity because this is how we are going to kind of close out this video what we are dealing with with miss Brittany is we are dealing with the spiritual um we're dealing with the spirit of double-mindedness and being half-minded or double-minded in christ generally refers to having an undecided or partial commitment to one's faith and spiritual practices it implies a lack of full dedication or wholeheartedness in following Christ and his teachings. So we can sit here and we can say we are living for Christ and we love God and we want his blessings, but your lifestyle doesn't align with that. That's half-minded. So you can't say you love God and you living for God and you're preaching his word, but yet your life is all over the place and completely not even showing that you are even trying to be in God full time. This concept can be linked to the idea of being double minded, which is mentioned in the Bible in James chapter one, verse eight. It says a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways and so when people say that miss Brittany is this and that let's let's god people say she's double-minded i came across this term maybe a year ago and god had me come across this term for this video now so just know that god is in control here and everything because it fits very very well in this situation because you may say well why is she saying this but doing that why is she doing that and saying this and i've said it in my own videos double-minded the verse highlights the instability and inconsistency that comes from not being fully committed to one's faith to be fully devoted to christ it's important to have a single-minded focus on him and his teachings rather than wavering or being partially committed. So one moment she's this way, one moment she's that way, one moment she's alluding to something and, and confusing an audience and, and want people to sit there and be Carmen San Diego and Nancy Drew. Baby, we don't have to do none of that with God's help. It's called discernment and you're double-minded. Now, how do you become not double-minded? You focus on God. Like that song, focus on me. No, no, focus on me. For focus on God. For focus on his word. That's the only thing I got at this point. I ain't got nothing else. Everything else has wavered in my life. Everything else has not been stable. The only thing that is stable in my life ever in my 40 plus years is God. 
And usually when you get into God and when you get into his faith and when you get nuzzled into everything, it seems like everything is falling apart. But honey, it is falling apart because God is rebuilding you, rebuilding the structure around you. And it's going to be a whole brand new vibe. And then when he got you to where you had, where you need to be, that road is not going to be so unstable anymore. You got to understand, when you get into God, honey, everything's all over the place. You just got out of a goddamn huge lava pit, water, you got seaweed all over. You come to God and you're like, oh my gosh. Because very rarely did we get saved when everything was going right. Baby, everything was going wrong. You got with that man. You had another baby. He did you wrong. He did this. You went through that. You lost your job. You did this. You did that. You, by the time you come to God, you have been through so much. And he says, come here, my child. I got you. Everybody think it's going to be a cakewalk. Everybody think it's going to be easy when you come to God. No, by the time you come to God, you have been broken down. You've gone through so much. You might have just lost some family members, lost your car, lost this, lost that. Everything around you is all over the darn place. And then you say, you know what? Let me get into God's word. Let me ask him to help me out. And he's like, I'm waiting for you. And we pray that everybody don't have to go through all that to get to him. Because we would love to have gotten to him when we were in, in our mama's womb, when we were five, when we first started, you know, talking, and then all of a sudden we got saved. But it don't work that way. You got to go through some things to really understand how God works. When people say God is good, some people don't know how good he is. Some people know. I know how good God is. Because he's gotten me through a whole bunch of stuff. Getting me through some things. I'm sitting here questioning, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to pay this? How am I going to pay that? I said, well, God, you're not going to have me homeless. You're not going to have me hungry. You want to feed me. I'm 40 something years old. I ain't never been out in the street. I haven't had an easy life, but I ain't never been out in the street in Jesus name. And you ain't going to have me out there because I know your word and I'm doing it. It's, it's tough. Trust me, it's tough. Enemy all up in my head trying to say, you're not going to be successful. There ain't nobody going to listen to this. This, 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 this. You don't need this. You don't have this. No. And you have to tell him, no, devil. Just like Jesus had to say, no. Oh, you can turn these these um stones to, to, to bread. He said, no, the body doesn't just need bread. Doesn't live just on bread alone. He said, you can jump off this, 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 um, you know, this cliff. And your angels, you can move your angels to come down. He said, no, we're not going to tempt God. Hello. So that's why you got to get the word because when that enemy starts spewing stuff at you, you're like, nah, Jesus said this. Uh-uh. He says this. Mm -mm. No weapon formed against me. Uh-uh. Whom today shall we serve? You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's see what that verse is. Okay. And we're going to leave out on this verse. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when the enemy comes to you and say, you can't do this and you can't do that, you're going to say what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you got to this point, I want you to go ahead and type that up. I can do all things through Christ who strength strengthens me. Hello. Okay. This verse is often cited to express the belief in the power of faith in Jesus Christ to provide strength and enable believers to overcome challenges and achieve their goals. Hello. So there you go. And that's what gets me through every day. And that's going to get you through, get through as well. Every day, God's people. Okay. Because there's so many things out here. They tell y'all don't do a YouTube. Oh, it's so much. It's what well, it, uh, it's saturated out here. Everybody got a YouTube channel. And if you keep listening to that, you won't forget Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when somebody says you can't do this, you can't do that, and you know God has put you on this earth to do it, you're going to say what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right? I hope this message helped you guys out. I will see you on the next video.